Everybody, you are welcome. Good to see all of you. Hallelujah. The Lord is good all the time. Amen and amen. Come and give God a big end of praise because this is the day that the Lord has made and let us rejoice in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Yeah, hey, we missed you guys. Hallelujah. We took some rest and then we just thought, here, yeah, it's been a hectic year. Let's take a break a little bit with my wife and then we thank God for that. Hallelujah. I was saying to another businessman, I said, if you can't take a break as a businessman, and if your business cannot operate in your absence, uh, you still have to do some, some work. Hallelujah. And uh, great leaders, you know, they actually distance themselves sometime, you know, just to allow things to happen and in their absence as well. So we thank God that God has graced us into that level that things can happen without us. And um, we give God all the glory you know, for all that he has done. Hallelujah. Please pray with us. We have identified a place in Devon. Hallelujah. We have identified a place in Devon. So, Abbas Devon, Kuluegani, Maduze, Nje, Maduze, Sia Kokota, Devon. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And then in in few weeks' time, two weeks or so, will be launching another work that side of the Clex Uh not far from Cosmo City, that Krugersdorp, 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 and then we are just finaling a lease and then with some guys. So in two weeks' time, we are launching and then in Krugersdorp. Hallelujah. So remember us in our prayers and uh, that it's not going to take a lot of stress from us because the road port team is actually planting that, that branch, that side. So they've got a team all together. We've got a band, we've got a worship team that is ready and then to go launch in that area in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I know that we have enjoyed the past few weeks, you know, of the topic, uh, die to live. Hallelujah. Die to live. And we're laboring on that theme die to live and the ministers of the gospel who stood here they did an extra ordinary you know work i want to close it this morning and then the, the the series under the topic a self-disciplined life a self-disciplined life i know most of us we don't love the word discipline hallelujah but but please work with me this morning a self-disciplined life that is what I'm going to talk about. I need to say that this sermon was inspired by a discussion I had with a group of young pastors who are passionate about serving God. And one of them said to me, Sir, I want to sow a seed in your life to tap into your favor and success. This is what this young person said. And those of you who are not you know, familiar with the statement of sowing a seed in your life, this is a common practice among Christians, especially charismatics and Pentecostal. People, they look at what we have done, they look at what we have achieved or what God is doing in your life, and somewhere, somehow, I think we need to fix some things because they will look at you and say, I want to sow a seed so that I can have what you have. As if you can just put money and, and, and buy that thing that I have. You understand? And they just want to do that. And somewhere, somehow, the, 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 that statement, it is not complete. Allow me to say, unfortunately, this practice compromises the entire truth, you know, regarding success. Anytime, listen to me, anytime you see a person who is doing anything exceptional, it's not only because of the favor of the grace of God upon them. Please don't lose it. I'm not saying it's not the favor of God or the blessings of God. They are blessed of God. They've got a favor of God, but it is not the only thing. There is something that they are doing over and above the grace that bestowed on them. The truth is, God gives grace to all men. He is not selective with his grace. Maybe I should quote 
Mensa ought to build there because he's putting it in a beautiful way. Listen what he says. He says, being graced is an investment of God in you. But being disciplined is your investment in yourself. God can grace you. God will bless you. But you need to understand that behind every great work, there is also hard work. So it is not complete when you come to somebody and say, I want to tap into your blessing. I want to tap into your grace or the favor that you have. Yes, there's a favor, but you need to go beyond that and ask that person and say, beyond favor and grace, what else have you done to be where you are? And I will tell you, anybody who is successful, anybody who's doing well, there is hard work behind that. They think they can just come in and buy the blessing. And you buy the favor. Anybody who's doing so well, it might be in ministry, it might be in business. It's not that God has just favored them. God has favored them. But they also put a lot of work behind their favor and their blessings. And if Christians can grab this, you'll understand that success is not something that would be far away from you. Let me give you a good example. A good example would be Usain Bolt here. Usain Bolt. We know that this man, he ran and won nine medals, gold medals, in, in less than two minutes. In less than two minutes. Are you aware that all this achievement... It was achieved in less than two minutes. All these nine gold medals, it was under two minutes. Let me recap for you, those of you who, who, who follow these sports. In Beijing, that was in 2008, this is what happened. He ran 100 meters. It was 9.69 seconds. And 200 meters in 19.3 seconds. And... Four by 100 meters, which is relay, he ran that for 8.98 seconds, okay? That was in 2008, and he went out with three gold medals, okay? In 2012, in London, he ran 100 meters just for 9.63 seconds, and 200 meters, 19.32, and then the relay... And it was 8.7, okay, and seconds. That was in London. He, he went out with three gold medals as well. He collected six in two, in, in, in two races. In Rio 2016, his 100 meters was 9.8. He was getting slow, but he was still faster than many people. 200 meters, he was still slow, but still faster, 19.76. And the relay, it was nine seconds, in nine seconds. I've put the minors there because they took that medal because one of the person in the relay, and then he was found taking drugs. So they took it. But now I'm saying all these achievements in less than two minutes. Now, this is what we do. Would come to this man and say, I want to tap in your anointing. I want to tap in your success. You can't buy that. It is true, listen to me. It is true that he is graced and blessed with long legs. But his success came through hard work and discipline. Let me prove it to you. Because we only see this less than two minutes. Look at the work behind the scene. This achievement, it was 18 years of hard work. 18 years of hard work. He started training at the age of 12. Trained three to four hours a day. Four to five times a week. At the age of 30, this man, his net worth was 44 Point two million, not the rents, dollars. 
besides the 10 million from Puma yearly. But you know what we do as Christians? We don't want the other part of 18 hours. We don't want the other part of working hard. It does not work like that, Bazalwa. There's always hard work behind the scene. Look at the person next to you and say, and say a life of self-discipline. Or a self-disciplined life. Now, the scripture has something to say about a self-disciplined life. Now, Paul speaks to the Corinthians. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, please turn with me there. If you don't have your Bible, read with me on the screen. Chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 24 to verse 27. He's talking about the matters of self-discipline. Listen what he says. He says, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Verse 25, he says, everyone who competes in the games goes into what, Bazalon? Read with me. Into what? Strict training because you are going into the race. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Praise the name. And in verse 26 says, therefore, I do not run like someone running endlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow, not to people, Bazalwane, but I strike a blow to who? To my body and make it what? And make it slave, my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Now, I love this to, to you at home. I love this when you read it with the message translation. You know, when you read it with the message translation, it's like you can read this and say, let's go home. Now, listen to the message translation. It says, you've all been to the stadium. It's a fact, yeah? You've all been to the stadium and seen the Atlas race. Everyone runs. One wins. He says, run to what, Barcelona? To win. And listen what he says. He says, all good athletes train hard. They are good, but they train hard. Your good, it is not enough. You cannot depend on your good. You cannot depend. Yes, you've got a talent, but you still have to do what, Bazalwane? You still have to train hard with the talent that you have. You are gifted, you are blessed, you've got long legs, but let me tell you, you still have to train hard, even if you are gifted. He goes on, he says, they do it for a gold medal that tarnishes and fades. You are after one that goes eternally. Verse 26, it says, I don't know about you, but I am running hard for the finish line. I am give it, I'm giving it everything I've got. Even if you are talented, but you are still giving it everything you've got. He goes on, he says, no lazy living for me. I am staying alert and in top condition. I am not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else all about it and then missing out myself. What a beautiful scripture. You see, I can just say, let's pray and go home right here. To the preachers of the gospel, you've got points there. Nanga my point, love. Nanga my point. You know, running hard. For the finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got. It's another point. No lazy living for me. I'm staying alert. In top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping. Hallelujah. Now when you look at that word. Self-discipline. Self-discipline simply means to exercise power over self. It's to exercise power over self. The ability to keep self under control. We, you don't have to be controlled by anybody. You know, if the church of Jesus, if God's people can be at that level where they, they control themselves, 
where you, 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 you keep self under control. There will be no need for you, you know, to be disciplined. There will be no need for you to get into the meeting. Let me tell you, Barcelona, even in marriage, even in marriage, if we can come to the point where we are able to, you know, to discipline ourselves before you speak, before you talk, you calculate, you, you put yourself under discipline, you, you, you collect the words, you select the words, what to say and what not to say. Many marriages by now would have survived. But the problem is that we are not under control. When you speak of self-discipline, you're talking about self-mastery over one's inner desires, thoughts, actions, and words. You discipline yourself. You know, I'm telling you, those who are in business, those who are running companies, they, they love people who are able to discipline themselves, themselves and who are able to control themselves. But here is the question. How to live a life of self-discipline? I think that's a big question. How to live a life of self-discipline? Because it is not just given. It's not something that you get from nowhere. You need to be able, you know, to exercise that self-discipline life. Are you ready for this? How to live a life of self-discipline? Bamba, number one, you need to pursue the main thing. You need to pursue the main thing. When you look at that word to pursue, it simply means to run after a task regardless of obstacles or challenges. Pursue the main thing. What is the main thing that you are pursuing? What is the main thing that you are pursuing? You see, as a husband, you need to pursue the main thing. Pursue your wife. Ten years later, pursue your wife. She's the main thing. Twenty years later, pursue your wife. Twenty-five years later, pursue your wife. She's the one thing. She's the main thing. I'm saying that because you need to know that we are in a battle. For the mere fact that you are married does not mean your feelings, they die. For the mere fact that you are married does not mean your eyes now they become blind. You can't see other beautiful women. But you see, you put yourself under control. If we are handsome like this, we are handsome like I pursue. I pursue one thing. I pursue. I'm a married man. I, I pursue. Come and look at the person and say, now he's talking to you. If we are, you are sitting next to a husband who is married, look at him and say, please pursue me alone. It's life of self-discipline. For the mere fact that you are saved, it does not mean these things will never come to you. Oh, no, where's the food? No, 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 social media. We've been looking at low high. You want to low high? You must know low high, low. How many of you have received that high? Oh, it's many of us. You have received that high. My question is, how do you respond to that high? You understand? Self-discipline. Because mamas are too high. Oh, the hello, hello. Self-discipline. It's life under what? So you pursue the main thing. That's what the scripture says. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Now, I've been reading a lot of material from Otterbill this week, and he, he gives one beautiful quote here. Listen to what he says. He says, if you believe where you are going is far, you must load deep. Can you put that statement, please? If you believe where you are going is far, you must load deep. Did you hear what I said? I don't know. They might have a challenge there at the back. But he says, if you believe where you are going is far, he says, you must load deep. Hallelujah. If you, you, you know where you are going is going to be far, you fill the tank. You load deep. You don't load sh you, you, shallow because you are going far. You see, the problem is we are loading shallow 
Because we don't understand that we, till now we are going far. If you are a child of God and you've got a great assignment, you need to load deep. You read more, more. You spend more time in the Word. You spend more time with God. You spend more time fellowshipping with God's people. If the assignment is great over your life, you must know that the devil is going to give you many challenges. That is why you must be solid in the house of the Lord, in the scriptures. Praise the name of Jesus. And this is what I always say to the worship team, to the, to the singers and those who are playing in the band. But if you can understand that your role, how important it is, you would load deep. You know why many musicians, they fall so easily? It is because you don't understand the challenges that you are facing. Good, where now you have stepped into a responsibility that used to be owned by the devil himself. Some of us, we are taking it because we know that we are on the front line. And I must load deep. Praise the name of Jesus. So you pursue. You pursue the main thing. And then number two, you purpose in your heart. You purpose, where was that In your heart. An intention or a reason for doing something, you know, for allowing or, or, or for allowing something to happen. You know, purpose in your heart simply means an intention or a reason for doing something or for allowing something to happen. Do you remember Daniel when he was offered food that was sacrificed to the gods? He said, the Bible says he purposed in himself that I'm not going to defile myself with this food. It was self-discipline. Some of us, we can't discipline. We can't even stop. Jesus. Baruti, lead us. I'm going to touch Let me deviate a little bit. There's seafood on the other side. And then there will be probably a red meat, meat on the other side. And then on the other side, there will be what we call curry food, curry, whatever. Now, by Suganisa Lesindo, Abasho Guti Tata e plate. We are a car. We are beef. We are seafood. Aw, Bari, Heta, Heta. The appetite, Yako, where is your appetite? Because when you cannot when crave for curry on the same day for beef and then and the seafood. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let's say then you want to have everything. Take your plate. Go to the curry side. You just dish out the curry. And your plate looks nice. Okay? You go and sit. You eat your curry. You finish it. Mount Eta, go and take another clean plate. There's nothing wrong. He buffet. Look at the person next to him and say, Muruto, what is Seta, man? What is Seta? What is Seta? Take a plate and then you go to the meat. You take whatever. You take whatever. You go a little bit. You go, you eat. If you feel you still halala, you are halalaring. The seafood. Go and take a little bit of that with a clean plate. Not the mountain of Moria. And you put a plate there, I can't see you, and then you can't see me on this side. Look at the person next to you and say, Discipline. Self disciplined. Say, I know you, I know you. I know he's talking to you, I know he's talking to you. Purpose in your heart. Nina spoke to us alone. My husband says, God, mess him. Say, I think I'm feeling ballet. And now, give me a root, give me a root, give me a root. I said, Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I understand poverty, African people. I understand poverty. Praise the name of Jesus. As in his indoor, I qualified to talk about them because I've been there until I was advised. I went one child.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, to Paul, therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave. Make that body a slave. Don't allow your body to control you, okay? Now, there's a quotation there by Plato. He says, the first and the best victory is to conquer self. The first and the best victory is to conquer self. Parents, control even those cell phones. Hallelujah. Conquer self. Praise the name of Jesus. Some of you might ring iPhone, Ubabo Asekaya. You jump like Brian Baloy, the goalkeeper. Ooh. You don't want people to see who is calling. Sure. Number three. I said number one, you do what? You pursue the main thing. Number two, purpose in your heart. Number three, persevere till the end. Hallelujah. When you look at that word, to persevere simply means having the guards of continuing in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. You've got the guards of continuing. That is self-discipline. Things are not that good, but you know what you do? You've got guards of continuing in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. Praise the name. That is why the scripture says, no lazy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. Look at this quotation. It says, perseverance is the hard work you do after you get tired of doing the hard work you already did. Did you hear what I said, Pastor Luan? It says perseverance is the hard work you do after you get tired of doing the hard work you already did. You know, you think already you, you, you are done, you, you have achieved or whatever, but you still continue. That is perseverance. You are saying, I've tried this, it did not work. But you don't give up. And you know what you do? You continue and then to push it. And number four, you process everything or process every idea. How to live a disciplined life, process every idea. Hallelujah. And to process simply means a series of actions, changes of function, bringing about a result. As a child of God, Process things that come your way. Process before you get into a contract. Process. When somebody comes up with a scheme, tells you, come and invest, process that, that, that process. Don't just jump into things. Sometimes people, they say, invest here, and then in three months, you still remember the Miracle 2000. You know, and say in two weeks, in two weeks' time, you know, your, your, your 1,000 would be 12,000. Don't jump. I had friends who were pastors who were trying to convince me to say, come invest into this. Hey Amen. I had to process that. I processed that. I said, no, 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 no. This does not look right. And let me tell you, some of the guys, they even lost the money for their church buildings because they thought I can take this money and put it there. And Imal, gone. Process these things. Don't just jump when somebody comes in and says, you can put this. There are a lot of scams in, in this season. People, they know that you are stranded. People, they know that you, you are suffering, you are struggling. They will come up with things and say, try this. No, no, process. Process these matters. Get information. Inquire about these matters. Who else has benefited from this? Are you with me, children of God? And if you can't do that, there's a problem. But I'm saying to you, process that. You know, Benjamin Franklin, he said, he that cannot obey cannot command. I love that quote. He that cannot obey cannot command. He simply says, you must be able, you know, to obey others before you can command. He talks about discipline. Be able to be under someone's leadership if you want to be a leader tomorrow. Be able to control yourself, to sit under someone's leadership before you can become a leader. The problem of our young people today is that they just want to lead without being led. Well, I'm not there. You know, in the next eight minutes, let me give you the benefits of self-disciplined life. Are you ready for the benefits, seven benefits of a self-disciplined life? Are you ready? 
That is the first one. When you are living a self-disciplined life, your life gets structured. Did you hear what I said? Your life gets structured. Proverbs 25 verse 28, it says, A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. Did you hear what it says? If you are not disciplined, the Bible says you are like a city with broken walls. An enemy can come in any time, an enemy can go out because there's no structure. You are not structured. Anything that comes your way, when? Young girl. Whatever comes your way, we have to do our way. Mutem fishane is tuta. Young taller, he cares. Whatever. As long as they say, I love you, when? Hey, I'm okay. Because you are not structured. You are like this man. He's not structured, this man. You don't have a structure. You are not even satisfied with what God has given unto you. I make you work with Asana Gijima. Why not you what this man, he is 75 years old. Umzimba, I'll I'll umzimba. I mean, the guy is holding a stick like this. But when a woman is passing by, 75 years old. You are not structured. Are you with me? But you see, when you are structured, you have a structure. You don't take advantage, you know, of those who are disadvantaged. Even when girls come to you, you are able to bless them without taking an advantage of them because you have a life of structure. I don't know how many times I've blessed young girls. Just bless them and say, yes, money, go register to school. Go register for your career. That's it, that's it. There's nothing bad, there's nothing that I want from you. Because I'm a, I have a structured life. My structure says I'm a pastor of hope restoration. I'm a husband to Pindi. I'm a father to... to, 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 to <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name and the one is with the Lord. Hallelujah. Get a structure in your life and say, this is me. Discipline gives you that. Gives you a structure. Gives you a shape. And gives you a respect. Because you are a disciplined person. Are you with me? So that's the first benefit. The, the second benefit is that you are at your own command. When you are living life under discipline, you are at your own command. You don't need anybody to keep on commanding you. You don't need anybody to keep on reminding you. Listen to what the scripture says in the book of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 7. It says, ants have no commander, no leader or ruler. Yeah? But they store up food in the summer and gather their supplies at harvest. It talks about ants. It says they don't have a commander. You understand? They don't have a commander, but you know what is happening with them? You know, they, 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 are, they are their own commander. You are at your own command. You don't need somebody to remind you that today it is Sunday. Some of you, you don't have a structure. You, you cannot command yourself. You wake up in the morning. You know, look at your room. Look at your room. Look at your room. Look at your room at home. You cannot even find things because there's no order in your room. Where now you, are now you only have a two-bedroom house. But you can't find your Bible. You can't find your socks. No debate no guy. No debate no guy. Now everybody in the house Sunday morning, but once the goes it's in two. I don't know why I said that in Sutu. <laughs> I don't know why I said that in Sutu. Only God knows why I said that. <laughs> Nothing against the Sutu people, but I, I don't know why. You know, somebody actually wrote me an SMS, Maramurutu, why when you make jokes, you make jokes because it's Sutu, yet we are a Shangani man. I, I'm Steve Nami. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you good this morning? So you, you, you are at your own command. It's so beautiful to be at your own command. 
Nobody must remind you that it's, it's time for church. You know, nobody must remind you that the service started at 9. I still don't understand when the service is starting at 9 and people, they come here at 10 o'clock. The service is starting at 11 o'clock and then you come here at 12 o'clock. I still don't understand. And you want to come here and you want to tap into my anointing. I want this. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It's time for us Christians to preach the truth. Not everything will come to us through prayer. Praise the name of Jesus. You need to discipline yourself. Wake up early. Put a structure in your life. Prepare before. I don't wake up in the morning and ask Pindi, what, what am I going to wear? Before I sleep, I know what I'm going to wear. I prepare everything a day before. Because I don't want to wake up in the morning if and then find I knew everything has been prepared. Where now is time for hey I never oh, oh, oh load shedding, load shedding. You didn't know that we've got a load shedding. Plan accordingly. Plan accordingly. It's discipline structure. We know that there's a load shedding. That is why we have a generator. We know that load shedding, it will actually be at 10 o'clock. We decided, uh -uh. run on generator. Because I don't want to be disturbed while I'm preaching. And then now, you, uh -uh. we said, don't even go to electricity. As a matter of fact, it's better to run on generator because you cannot trust the electricity of South Africa. But it's when you have a structure. Number three, these are the benefits. You make better choices. When you are self-disciplined, you make better choices, Barcelona, okay? I'm not going to spend time on that one. But besides that, number four, your standard of living rises when you are disciplined. Your standard of living rises. Listen to what the scripture says, Proverbs 16.32. It says, he who is slow to anger is better than a warrior. And he who controls his temper is greater than one who captures a city. Yo. He who has a self-control, he's better than the one who captures the city. So the standard of your living rises because you are a person of discipline. People, they respect people of discipline. They would rather go into partnership with them. But Zolani, you don't know how many people who want me to be their partners because they came in here, they saw the structure. The way we do things, the way we do things in order, time, with excellence, it actually rises your standard. People can invest in you because they can trust you because you are a person of structure. Some of you, you want your business to flourish, but even when you come into a business meeting, where now you are always late, I, I, I don't know. It's just in me. I don't know. I is a man is shangad. Ungena so 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 julukile. Oh, yeah, I want a long man. Ungena so fufulela. Are you asking for your grace? So when I make my joke, they are good in two hours suit. You cannot pass one. So your standard of living rises. Okay. Number five. I'm about to close. You, you manage time effectively. When you are self-disciplined, you manage time effectively. The Bible says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like ignorant people, but like wise people. Make good use of every opportunity or time you have, because these are evil days. When you live a disciplined life, you actually manage your time effectively. And number six, you become more healthier and productive. When you live a disciplined life, you become more healthier. Let me give you a verse there. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. It says, physical exercise has some value. But spiritual exercise is valuable in every way because it promises life both for the present and for the future. But I love it. It also says physical exercise has some value. It goes a long way. It goes a long way. I'm not saying go out and then and build muscles. Let them do it, those ones. You know? 
but just sometimes take a walk. After a meal, just take a walk of 15 minutes. Come back. Ustaja urwale. Hi, guys, forgive me. I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> number seven, number seven. Hallelujah. You know, if you are living a disciplined life, your relationships improve. Your relationship improves because you are disciplined. You will have more time for your family. You will have more time for your children. You will have more time for your colleagues because you are managing time. Are you with me? Don't feel bad to say no to other things. Don't feel bad. If you can't make it, you can't make it. But your relationships, they become productive and then they increase as well. They become effective because you are managing your time very well. If you want to live long and if you want to make an impact, if we want to make a difference, it begins with us. You know, a life of self-discipline or a self-disciplined life. If things are not happening in your life, start small. Start small. Manage your time. Manage your finances. Manage your relationships. Give. Come up with a program. And you'll be amazed what the Lord will do. Some of you, health-wise, you are struggling. It's not that it's the devil. You are not managing your time very well. Manage time. Have some rest. And you'll be, you'll be surprised what God can do when you rest. Discipline yourself. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. My family, they know. The guys, and then we are at peace now. They know that 7.30 or 8 o'clock, you know, phones aside. Abantuana, they know. Phones aside. At the dinner table, phones aside. We look at one another. It's dinner time. Hallelujah. Discipline yourself in those small things and you'll be amazed what God will do. Was that a good word? Come and stand on your feet this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us online in Jesus' name. We pray that may the good God continue to do you good. Use these small qualities, these small points in disciplining yourself and your life is going to improve at home. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We pray for those at home. We speak your grace. We speak your favor. While they are watching from different places, some from different countries, Lord, you know what they need. You know what they desire. In the name of Jesus, grace them, O oh God. Do them good. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Church, raise your right hand, please. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you today. Lord Jesus, come to my heart. Be a Lord and the Savior of my life. Devil, from today, you will never, ever rule my life. My life belongs to Jesus, Jesus alone. Thank you, Lord, as from today, your spirit is upon me to help me to live a life of self-discipline. I know it is not easy, but with your help, Holy Spirit, it is possible in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Come on, give God a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a big hand of praise. We can do this, Barcelona. We can do this. We can do this. And when we begin to do that, God will take us to another level every day of our lives. Thank you for coming. Now listen to me. Listen to me. We want our visitors right now, if you're our first-time visitor, if you're our first-time visitor, there's a board right there that says first time visitors. I want you right now, wherever you are, and then to excuse yourself. Excuse yourself, you are our guest. And I want you to follow that board. Even those of you who have never prayed that prayer of accepting Jesus in your life, you have prayed that prayer for the first time. We want you right now. And then there's another board that, that says new life. We are trying to redeem time. Come on, let's encourage them more visitors. And anybody come come you are coming here for the first time you are coming here for the first time we want to know you we want to know your needs come let's encourage them as they go here they go here they go anybody else come and encourage them look at them thank you thank you thank you 
our visitors, our visitors, in the name of Jesus. Even if you have a prayer, they're going to pray with you that side. Follow that board. Follow them. They are still coming. We are still coming. Look at them. We want to take care of them. We want to take care of them in the name of Jesus. Run, 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 run. We don't want to lose you. Take your belongings. Take everything that you have. Here they come. We actually realize that this is the most effective way of winning them to the Lord. Hallelujah. There we go. There we go. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. God bless you. God bless you. Church, stretch your hands towards me in the name of Jesus. May the grace and the favor of God be upon you. I declare that we are blessed coming in and we are blessed God. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are the child of the most high God. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Do you receive it today? Now listen to me. Listen to me. If you need a prayer, maybe you've got a personal challenge, maybe you're not feeling well, or maybe you want to speak to somebody. I'm going to ask the elders and the pastors to remain behind. If you have a prayer need, you have a prayer request, our team will be here to pray with you and also to encourage you in Jesus' name. Amen. Fussy.